just get this kicked off, I'll do a little intro about ARC. I'm Robert Jacoby, president of ARC Technology Group. Uh, we're the diamond sponsor here, and we do Joomla. We've been around for 12 years and doing Joomla custom content management development, uh, custom application development. We've built our own uh, CMSs, uh, mail uh, deployment tools, all sorts of crazy, crazy stuff. Uh, and we've started working with uh, Joomla specifically right when it was born. Um, we've been working with uh, its predecessor for uh, a few years beforehand and then when Joomla converted over. Uh, all sorts of clients, Fortune 50 to entrepreneurs, trying to do big enterprise work these days. Um, before I get too far into the Joomla portion of it, um, everyone here is a Joomla geekhead. Uh, Microsoft, anyone's actually using Microsoft, not obviously Word or Windows or Office, but um, in the enterprise or in your companies yet, maybe, thinking about it. <laughs> or not at all. <laughs> um, we do a lot of uh, SEO. We like to uh, just toot our own horn about um, some of our stats. So, you know, it's, it's a, both the benefit of, you know, how we do content as well as the benefits of Joomla and uh, a lot of its built-in SEO, SEF uh, work. Um, a nice little key one is for our Joomla development Chicago, you know, showing up number one on Yahoo, number one on Google, number, uh, or, yep, number two on Bing. Um, these are actually really recent stats as of this week. So, um, you know, the right content, the right mix of stuff, and using Joomla actually uh, really makes your life easy in trying to get your terms out there. Uh, we also do a lot of work with responsive design for uh, mobile platforms, so iPad, iPhones. Um, sorry, Microsoft, we're not using any of your stuff today. <laughs> but, you know, it's really great just to be able to use a responsive design, a responsive template, and, you know, have it work uh, pretty much seamlessly across, you know, your regular web uh, browser, iPad, iTunes, uh, iPhone. We have a long, long history with Joomla. We started... Uh, Working with Joomla, like I said, a number of years ago, we sponsored Joomla Day Chicago. Uh, obviously, today we uh, go out and work with uh, Jay, Beyond, Jay and Beyond and do presentations for the developer conference. Um, we've been a multi-year sponsor of Joomla Chicago, the local user group, as well as CMS Expo. Um, nationally, we also sponsor Joomla Camp New York, Joomla Day New England, and uh, we work with the Joomla uh, core team on a lot of uh, direct initiatives, as well as on their future roadmap. Uh, so, you know, the big question is, you know, why Microsoft? <laughs> why would you want to do this to yourself? Uh, what are the benefits uh, and uh, what's there to do? Uh, Microsoft, as you may have heard in Grace's presentation, uh, is confirmed, uh, is committed to uh, open source. Um, they've spent a lot of time, money, and energy with uh, putting developers onto open source projects. Um, again, spending a lot of time uh, as well. Money behind the projects as well as uh, grassroots engagement. Uh, so they're here today, for example, um, on the ground floor trying to promote what they do uh, in the open source space. Um, Microsoft also obviously has a huge install base still at the you know, corporate, so mid-sized uh, enterprise level. Uh, you're still going to have Microsoft servers. There's a ton of SharePoint servers out there. So right off the bat, you have SQL Server, you have IIS, that whole uh, batch of things that keep an enterprise running. And, uh, you know, like it's easy to deploy. So uh, it's already there, and Joomla is easy to deploy. And we'll talk about how Microsoft and Joomla, you know, work together. Um, so who would be the right, you know, target for Microsoft and Joomla? Well, we kind of hit on that. And so we have small, medium-sized businesses that are already deploying something along the lines of SharePoint. So they have that infrastructure. They have a website. They're trying to connect internal information um, externally. Uh, the enterprise, intranets, uh, extranets, and of course their websites um, that are running on the back end. Anything with existing uh, Microsoft infrastructure, you know, anything with an existing MS SQL infrastructure. And ex additionally, people are looking to do Azure work, so get out into the cloud. Um, you know, the next question is how would Microsoft and Joomla integration work together well? There's a lot of benefits of uh, utilizing the two. Um, the key is uh, leveraging existing IT uh, infrastructure and resources. You know, there's all that software and hardware out there that's running 
the platforms on a day-to-day -day basis. And with that comes a trained IT staff. So you don't have to worry about managing what's going on with all that stuff, bringing a new whole Linux infrastructure. You know, some companies get very wary of having you know, heterogeneous environments, um, especially if they don't have the trained staff. That might not be a policy decision. It may come from IT. Well, we don't know this, so we don't want to get ourselves bogged down in something we're not very comfortable with, and we're experts in Microsoft. Uh, benefits of you know, Joomla, again, is easy deployment. So it's very easy to roll out Joomla on a Microsoft infrastructure these days. And we just love Joomla. It's the best content management system out there. Uh, we play in practice with you know, Drupal, WordPress, not anymore, really. We just decided that that's not something that satisfies a lot of uh, enterprise needs. Uh, but there's a number of other content management systems, uh, open source, you know, .NET, Nuke, things like that. And Joomla still wins the day. And Microsoft is open. Uh, it really, really is. Uh, you know, they have a, a number of tools that are out there. Um, web App Gallery, the Web Platform Installer, Web Matrix. And they're free to download, easy to access, easy to deploy on what you have. And you know, Web App Gallery is actually very interesting. It has, uh, you know, I forget what Grace may have said this morning, but you know, certainly 50 plus, hundreds plus of uh, open source applications available. Windows ready, open source, and they're easily accepted and uh, rolled out and utilized uh, in the platform. And Microsoft is, again, very open. So you can actually go to these uh, URLs and uh, download uh, uh, Joomla right off the bat. Um, the quick links are web.ms. Um, from there, you know, the, the Joomla link is web.ms slash Joomla. Uh, there's the web app gallery, so web.ms slash gallery, which will actually lead you to all the other open source projects. So Drupal, PHP, Word, or MySQL, uh, Joomla, you know, any kind of open source package that you can pretty much imagine is out there. It's uh, very cool and exciting stuff to just be able to roll out these tools on your uh, Windows platform. Uh, there's the web platform installer. That's sort of part of web app gallery that helps you just download and install everything to your Windows environment. And then web ma uh, Microsoft Web Matrix, which is the Microsoft web development tool. Um, sort of uh, uh, like uh, visual uh, development tools, a little uh, made a lot easier uh, to manage uh, open source web projects. Um, we're using a lot of these tools, uh, we were able to put together, um, actually over a year ago, uh, a sort of exemplar website of Joomla running on a Microsoft uh, backend. We call that um, Our New Neighborhood. You can actually go to ournewneighborhood.org and see how it's uh, performing and running uh, on a Microsoft environment and taking care uh, advantage of many uh, Microsoft key features and technologies. Some of the tools we use for this um, are pretty standard. So this is actually running on a Windows 7 server uh, with SQL Server Express, IIS. And because Joomla needs PHP, PHP is installed and running. And uh, also some SQL Server uh, reporting services tools. So you can actually do um, all the things that Microsoft SQL Server reporting services can do by building out uh, great custom reports and templates. So just a quick picture of that. And now we're going to try to dive in here, just walk you through a little bit of ournewneighborhood.org. And while we're waiting for this to load up, this will be the smallest. We're just going to do it like this. <laughs> Load that up, or try to. One moment. There we go. This is ournewneighborhood.org. Um, again, it's running on that infrastructure I just talked about, uh, utilizing a lot of uh, other Microsoft features. We built out a number of custom extensions that have been open source that tie into uh, Bing, LiveID, um, on and on. Those are actually accessible through here. So you can hit Windows Live Messenger extension, uh, how to, you know, an extension for gener uh, viewing SQL reporting services, reports, and just walk through a little bit of this so you can see what's going on. 
So we have a neighborhood here. We actually have a Bing API connection, which was just changed a few weeks ago, so we haven't had a chance to upgrade the, uh, to the new uh, API and authorizations that go with it. But it pulls up videos, news, search that's based on the neighborhood, and send in a number of parameters. It's uh, open source and customizable uh, if you want to do that yourself. Connect up with Windows Live Messenger. Um, we also, or I also block all my flash on my laptop, but this is a uh, zoom in. Uh, which we built a custom JCE plugin for, so you can integrate with Zoomit. So you can go into your editor with JCE, hit the uh, Zoomit button, upload the image through uh, JCE, goes to the Zoomit server, and you can take advantage of Zoomit's, you know, super high res uh, functionality of diving in and out of images. So the higher res the image, you know, obviously the better the zoom in and zoom out features are. Uh, frankly, our favorite thing here that we're able to do is integrate with Live ID. So this actually allows us to log in with Live ID and then become authenticated to be able to use the Joomla site as that specific Joomla user. So let me log in here as one of the users. It's Kelly's Flowers. And that's her regular Live ID email. And after she gets to log in, she'll jump immediately to her uh, website, our web page that she uh, maintains for her uh, little neighborhood business. Um, shows a uh, big map location of where her business is. Uh, she's authenticated to edit only her content, so we can see the front end editor is enabled for her. Again, we're not you know, using Joomla authentication directly. It's going through Live ID authenticating back, and we can do whatever we want. So this is great if you have multiple services relying on Live ID. And shows you know, the power of uh, Joomla being able to integrate with other authentication services, LDAP, and so forth. This is a pretty s straightforward uh, website, just again to show you know, examples of the fact that it can work with uh, Microsoft and Windows. It's much easier now. We did this way before all the tools were all set, just to you know, again show that it's possible. Um, here's a, just a quick report of um, some recent traffic and hit counts using SQL Server reporting services. So again, all the data is in SQL Server. And instead of just doing a direct query, we're actually using the, the full tool set of SQL Server reporting services. If we wanted to, we could go into the back end of SQL Server SRSS. I'm tired of saying SQL Server reporting services, or SSRS. Uh, build out graphs, all kinds of functionality. Uh, the, the extension allows you to just pull that in so you could have you know, really fantastic graphs that are generated on the fly um, that are uh, embedded for all intents and purposes. Whoa, we need music in ours. <laughs> and uh, take advantage of all that kind of enterprise data that you may have sitting on SQL. Let's jump back to the presentation. So we've gone through some of the tools. You know, oops, click through all, again, the functionality that's enabled in the Arnie Neighborhood website. And a lot of this work can be done using WebMatrix. WebMatrix is uh, the Microsoft open source development tool. It's uh, insanely powerful, surprisingly, for something that's free, um, which is not why it's great, but it's, it's great because it integrates with a number of other features. Let's dive into uh, what WebMatrix actually looks like. Uh, WebMatrix 2.0 was released earlier this year um, after a lot of feedback from the open source community. Uh, there were issues about you know, how do we do code completion, how do we do uh, locking down of certain components for certain packages. For example, in Joomla, you don't want to be able to edit most of the core. You really just want to be sitting there going, <laughs> uh, going to templates or doing you know template extensions, things like that, or overrides. And the Microsoft listened and uh, did a lot of work to make sure that that kind of functionality was uh, enabled. When you first log into WebMatrix after you've obviously downloaded it. <clears throat> You get your simple open, you know, what sites do I have? Templates, app gallery. If I want to install a build of Joomla, I can go ahead and open up the web app gallery and see all the popular uh, open source uh, applications that are out there. And this web connection is fantastic at the hotel. There we go. So we have WordPress.net new Joomla 2.5. And these are updated by their uh, sort of individual uh, user groups and communities. 
Those icons will probably load up eventually. And it's uh, usually kept up very, very up to date. So when you're downloading, you know, for example, Joomla 2.5, you're downloading 2.5.6 uh, pretty much a day or two right after the official release. Uh, Arc is actually the uh, package developer for Joomla 2.5, so it's our job to make sure that people using the Microsoft tool actually have the latest version of Joomla at all points. It's the, still the standard install, it's just packaging it up so it works for uh, WebAmp Gallery and takes into account things like uh, SQL Server and other options that you might want during install. Um, you can choose Joomla 2.5, click through, change your site name, uh, and go through the whole uh, install process. We'll skip that because of slowness, and but it's pretty straightforward. You enter your site name, you enter um, a MySQL database, or you can choose between SQL Server and MySQL, choose a database password. Um, so if we want SQL Server or MySQL, we can choose here on the fly whatever our environment, our preferred environment is. Um, let's just go to... SQL Server, click Next, wait, accept the uh, end user license agreement. You know, it's pretty much the understanding that Microsoft does not actually build Joomla. There are requirements uh, that will also be uh, needed for Joomla. In this case, we already have PHP, MySQL, a number of the other uh, tools already enabled, IIS. If you're coming at it from a straight install, you're going to see a whole list of all the other sort of prerequisites uh, that need to be uh, dumped on there. We can jump into accept. Yeah, WebMatrix is going to ask if it has permission. It's going to download it. You can load your sample data, website name. Pretty standard uh, if you've done a Joomla install before. Everyone's done a Joomla? OK, so at this process, it's kind of taking over those uh, web screens that you may have seen on doing a regular Joomla install. And it's just happening through the WebMatrix uh, interface. Um, we'll just cancel out of here, and we'll actually go to um, sites that we have on here, and click My Sites. So we can jump into the ARC uh, example site. And the screen's a little small, but a bunch of functionality on the left and right, so you can see what the local URL. So this installs it all locally, so you're running on local host. You can install as many versions as you want. It's just going to add extra port numbers to local host. So uh, you know, starting at whatever, 32,000, just keep adding up. So you can run multiple versions if you've installed an old 2.4 you know, version, 2.5, and just have them all running locally. Shut them uh, on and off uh, as you want. IS manages all that process. This does not ever use Apache, so you know, as part of that portion, the web server is always going to be IS. You can navigate all your files. And on some of these, which you can't actually see from here, uh, there's a little lock on the core files. So if you wanted to edit those, it's going to give you a pop-up that says you really want to do this. Um, th this may cause permanent damage to you, your psyche, your family, things like that. But diving in, you can easily go in and edit you know, templates and infrastructure. Dives into some of these files. You know, there's some HTML overrides. So we dive into the index.php. A nice little Joomla 2.5 uh, index.php file. So it handles a lot of code completion for PHP. Just make sure, that, you know, when you're coding that out, that works fine. Uh, HTML, CSS, very easy and friendly to use. Um, you can look at your database. Or you can if you click it. There you go. You can see this is an automatically assigned database name by the installer. We'll connect up to the uh, local database. You can get your schema views, see all your tables. There we go. So it's also, you don't have to worry about PHP My Admin if you don't want to. Um, of course, you can also install that because <laughs> it's still running PHP. And if you have MySQL installed, you're, you're good to go. Let's jump back to files. Uh, if we want to jump to the site and see what it's looking like, just hit Run. It's going to open up uh, the local install. And this is just a slightly tweaked version of the default Bs5 template for Joomla 2.5 you know, with all the default content. I think they should make these transparent PNGs for uh, talk to Elon worrying about that later. <laughs> and again, this is just Joomla running. Uh, actually, in this environment, it's on parallels, but on a you know, Windows environment doing its uh, thing.
if we want to go edit any content or templates, we can just jump back to Web Matrix. We can look at the templates. Let's go up to the CSS. Um, these five CSS. You know, let's change the background color from black to red. Let's go ahead and save that. Click it open again. Oops. Maybe we didn't save that. Or maybe red just doesn't show up on this monitor. <laughs> um, let's go back here. between the presentation and windows and lost my cursor there we go there we go there's the cursor there we go so there's our you know again just simple template editing any kind of file editing we want to if we want to edit components and so forth right through uh, Web Matrix. Any questions about Matrix, Web Matrix and how this works or whatnot? I mean, if you've done coding and changing websites, that's pretty straightforward. But uh, you know, sort of out of the box, you can do a lot of this local work with Web Matrix before I get to some of the other functionality. I'm sorry? Do, I don't know if we ever use the debugger. Um, we always use the browser debuggers. <laughs> um, I have not used it. I don't know if oh, Kendall's shaking his head back there. I'll ask Grace because she's in the middle of looking at something. Do you remember if uh, Web Matrix has a, a debugger, built-in debugger for? Not right now. Okay. Yeah, I was going to say because we always use the browser at the back end or on, on the front end. Um, it's you know a lot of the browsers you can put in stop points directly in, and so that's nice. Um, Okay, pretty straightforward. You can also jump into, uh, you know, Visual Studio directly, um, site admin, go to the Joomla website uh, to find out more information. Get uh, there's an updated uh, gallery of all the extensions available for Joomla. Click these buttons. That will probably open up something shortly. I don't know if we're relying on the web, that'll be take a while. And then you may also see, okay, so here it is. There's the extension gallery. Loading, loading, loading. Uh, one of the other nice functionalities that we'll get into is being able to publish directly from Web Matrix to your website. So here's a, some extensions that are available. Oh, these are extensions for Web Matrix directly, but um, going to the community site, you can grab extensions for Joomla. I have those ready. And again, this site's a fully functional Joomla website. You can go to the admin. You can install it from uh, back there and uh, have everything done just like you would on Joomla. Here you'll see there's a, a publish button. Um, and these days, we actually, it'll work with a number of web services, but we actually like to uh, talk about it uh, with regards to um, Windows Azure. Uh, that is the Microsoft uh, Windows Cloud Computing Platform. It offers a number of services. There will actually be a number of other talks about that throughout the uh, uh, Joomla day. And we're just going to touch on the website's ability of Windows Azure, which allows you to quickly and easily get up uh, and going on Windows Azure. So let's jump into the web and again take a look at Windows Azure. Going uh, to the Microsoft website, it's pretty easy to get just started up with Windows Azure. You can uh, go to the home page, it'll ask you to log in and sign up. At that point, you can just sign up for a free account, which allows you 10 websites. Um, small, they limit the amount of resources that are available to it, but you can obviously uh, expand on those and scale, which is one of the things we like. So you can play around for a while, get used to it, get functionality the way uh, you're comfortable with and you understand it. And then um, scale up to some of their other services. Oops. 
Let's always log in. Microsoft doesn't exist. Huh. Let's try that again. Robert Dr. Phil. Let's see how much user error we'll put into this. Okay. When in doubt, uh, when in doubt, we should Bing it, right? Not Google it, right, Grace? <laughs> Let's find out where that home screen is. Let's just go here. So windowsazure.com uh, is a starting point, launch point for the cloud computing uh, services. There's a lot of free trials and features available. And you can scale uh, you know, a million different ways. Geographically, you can uh, host your environment in different places. You know, s some of the things are still similar with like Amazon um, and Rackspace. The one real big difference is that uh, Azure actually has, supports a whole platform of computing API, which you can code directly to and take advantage of. So those resources are also spread out. But we're going to play with websites, which is a lot simpler. That's the lo logo I wanted to see, or icon. Boy, typing without seeing the screen is surprisingly difficult. We'll just log in here into uh, our web portal. We set up just one website uh, using the Azure Website Services. And it's going to click, click, click through. And more cool web icons and graphics and spinning. Uh, Windows Azure supports a number of environments right out of the box, PHP um, being one of them, obviously. So here we are, it's gonna put up all our items, You know what kind of databases we have, what kind of cloud services we're using, the amount of uh, storage and CDN uh, work we're doing, or blog storage. Uh, we have one website, You know, again, quick three month trial for setting this up. Uh, we can go ahead and click into here. You know, some great quick information about what's going on, publishing our app, we can, uh, oops. There's the site the link to preview it. Dashboard data. If you want to scale, all that kind of information. And here's our site URL. So you can get a nice pre-generated uh, URL at azurewebsites.net. We'll jump to it and we'll see we have a nice little Joomla site. Slowly getting pulled up, uh, running on the Azure environment. Da, 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 da. Joomla, same development, same everything. Now, one of the things that we really, really like is, oops, if I can jump back here, is the integration between WebMatrix and uh, Azure. So in this case, we start out by doing the default Joomla Azure install uh, on via Azure. It'll actually walk through the whole uh, web application process there. Loaded up uh, WebMatrix and said, you know, we have a site out there um, on Azure type in our credentials, pick the site we want, scoops down everything into our local environment, and now we can run it off a of local host and off of uh, Azure. Um, in this case, this is already linked up, so we changed the background from black to red, and we can now publish that, and this actually takes a little longer than we'd like, and you can publish either just file changes or uh, full databases. So we'll go in there and make a, a template change, and we'll see how that actually gets migrated from the local host up to Azure. Um, so it's really easy to have a, a very localized development environment and then push to you know, multiple environments out there uh, on the cloud. Now it's going to spin for a little bit, figuring out what files we've changed. We only changed one, but it's going to run through everything to make sure that it's good. You can also delete anything that you don't want left on the server. So if there are changes drawn, done directly on Azure, you can clean those out as well, um, depending on how your production environments are set up. Uh, normally, we have a dev stage and production uh, environments. So uh, you know, real changes are mostly happening on stage. So we push from stage to production. And you know, if something accidentally got into production, we wipe it out. And it's spinning, spinning, spinning. While it's spinning, uh, any questions on Azure benefits, how it's being used, and you know what what your thoughts are, or how you're thinking about Microsoft and Joomla since you guys are here, 
um, more questions you might have. It's, it's a pricing wise. It's I think it's actually at this point uh, cheaper than Amazon uh, services. Plus you get the whole. Uh, there's a, a lot more distributed stuff. So with you, you get this distributed SQL, you get uh, blog storage um, that are on a platform as opposed to just having a bunch of VMs. And now you can also set up the VMs as well in Azure right out of the box. Uh, but the idea behind Azure is to really just sort of spread out that one computer so you're not really looking at different VMs and environments um, like you might would uh, with Amazon. Uh, we found the one file that needs to be updating. We can publish to the SQL Server database. We're not going to at this point, just to make life a little quicker. We're going to start publishing. And while it's sitting there publishing, we're going to actually go to our local install again and make some uh, back end changes. Whoops, that is not the right button. <laughs> Thank you. Do not hit Control L. I repeat, do not hit Control L. To clean out all the default Joomla fun stuff and just drive into the administrator. Passwords that are much more complicated than you want them to be. Give a quick look here at what that password was. Uh, Microsoft. Let's try this. Oops. Log in here. No. This is not going to be fun. The um, Microsoft install uh, mandates exceedingly complex passwords, so not one that you're used to using. That can cause a problem. Let's go here and look at oops, some notes. Okay. Now we got the password. That'll make life easier. Because <laughs> we could just go in and reinstall another Joomla install, but that take a little longer than we want. So as we log in, come on. There we go. If we want to go ahead and just do something simple like updating the template manager on our local install, we can go ahead and click that. We can take a, also a look if, um, OK, publishing is complete. We'll take a look at that in a sec. We're going to move our local install from Bs5. We'll just go back to, I think, Blue, what is it? Uh, jump down to Hather is our default install for the local. All right. Well, that's an administrator one, isn't it? Let's not use that. Let's go ahead and just switch to Atomic. And then we can go ahead and view the site and see that the, you know, locally it switched to the Atomic template. If we're out back here on our Azure site, let's jump out there again. Wait for that to load up. 
that should bring up our red background. So we've been able to just publish the uh, CSS work that was done there. And now we're going to go in and uh, republish the site, but with the uh, database changes. So again, you can make a lot of local database changes. It's not table specific or anything. So if you are accumulating a lot of user data on the publishing side, uh, you'll, you'll wipe it out. So at this point, it's just taking the full database locally and pushing it over, which is great for development. Um, but obviously, if you're doing a production environment, you're going to want to be very careful about what's going on there. Is there a plan? Do you know if there's a plan to where it can go merge? That's a good question. I don't know if Grace. Yeah. Is there a plan to be able, when you do a database push, to merge or be uh, table selective? I would also go back to the Yeah, because right now it's great if you're just you know doing the initial dev and staging and things like that, but you know, there's going to obviously a lot of end user content that'll be generated. That. Well, right now, it's, it's either on or off, or all or nothing. I mean, it's going to wipe out the whole DB, and um, you know, you'll be starting from scratch. Again, this takes a little longer than we'd like. Correct. Yep. All the reporting, all the hits, and, you know, any article blog changes. You know, if you're using some kind of a commenting system, you don't want to accidentally wipe that out as well. Um, oops. Let's go back here. No. Where did we just? So we're going to push just the database, publish to the MySQL server. Now it's going to go push all the content of uh, our local MySQL database to the Azure install. And there are also other web hosting providers you can connect with that uh, support uh, web matrix publishing as well. So um, it does not support SFT or does not support SFTP if I'm correct out of the box, but we've just been using it with Microsoft servers in this case. I'm sorry? Um, it's, uh, what is it, web? Um, Web dev, and then the, you can just go to Microsoft Hosting Partners. They're actually listed on the site as well that support that. Um, in fact, the one that we used uh, for our new neighborhood.org, um, it's called uh, uh, I2 Technologies, and they uh, support the push to the publish to web uh, via web matrix as well. So this is still doing its little publishing thing. The database is pretty tiny, so it should be able to do it relatively quickly. Just jump uh, whoops, over to where's our just see when it clicks over to the new template. Oh, not yet, not yet. What kind of uh, uh, are Microsoft integration do you guys do? Anything? I'm trying to, you're all just. Joomla guys uh, trying to figure out if this is uh, worth your while. <laughs> uh, what kind of development environments do you guys use? I'm sorry? Oh, for the hosting and then on the development environment side? Text editor? <laughs> VI? <laughs> if you're hardcore? Or what's, uh, what's everyone's, uh, what's pre-VI that everyone loves to use? Emacs, that's the one I was thinking of. Oh, is it? Okay. Um, I actually prefer VI over Emacs because for simple, quick edits, it's just, yeah. Here we are. So now we publish the database to uh, Azure, and we have the new template up. It you know, takes a little while. That's because this guy's running through it all, you know, parallels on top of Mac, so everything's running just a little bit slower, um, and the network's not that great. Oops, and I keep clicking through the wrong little bits and pieces here. So that's sort of the, uh, you know, what does Windows Azure look like? 
um, you know, sort of at the end of the day, you know, what all these things do together. I mean, it helps you know, Microsoft and Joomla you know, work with your business and, and help it grow. I mean, it's an easy environment to, to work through. You can really set up just flat out little microsites and Joomla sites very quickly if you wanted to uh, on your uh, Windows environment. You know, Microsoft is committed to open source. Uh, they're here, they're, they're working hard to uh, uh, let everyone know that Joomla tools, other open source tools are very flexible on top of Microsoft. Again, the great tools that are all ready, and Joomla's like, Joomla is Microsoft ready, so you can go ahead and connect up with Azure, with SQL Server, and all the Microsoft backend and functionality right out of the box, which has taken the Joomla community actually a lot of time to do because there was a lot of database backend work to extrapolate and create layers, so we can build plugins for Oracle, for Postgres, for MySQL, obviously, um, MS SQL as well. I'll get started doing it. It's easy. You have the first question. <laughs> and there's a lot of Joomla community people that really helped make this work, especially on the database integration and functionality. Well, it's easy to set up just a, a basic default install. If we're going to talk about Azure as an example, set that up and then just migrate all that content from your existing site, just like you would you know, using a Akiba or something like that. So you could install a basic Joomla template, a basic Joomla install, install uh, Akiba, and do the backup and restore from one site to the other. Again, you're going to have to make sure that you know, you're running MySQL on both ends at that point. Uh, and once Yes. So if I, if I already have it built, I can just upload it like I would with Akiva, get them set up on their desktop with the uh, web matrix, and, uh, and if they wanted to download it to their own you know, development, further development environment, and then be able to, uh, to, to, to manage it from there. That, they're, all, they're, they're all set. They're all set. That's exactly it. It's become ridiculously easy to actually have Joomla running on, uh, on Windows. Exactly what I wanted to hear. <laughs> It's a pro we've, we've had uh, you know, the opportunity to watch the whole process over the last year, year and a half, and so we've seen the original web matrix and how Azure worked with that and as it's progressed, and you know, the growing pains of Joomla to make sure it's supported all of the Microsoft functionality, which it's you know, just doing great these days. Um, yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah, we were actually, as we talked about how you know, a lot of the open source community came in to talk about how web matrix was actually utilized. Uh, our team was also uh, one of the members of that group to you know help guide what makes sense and what doesn't for you know all sorts of you know levels of Joomla developers because there's ones that are just worried about templates and things and then there's people who are really coding but you still just want to make sure that they know you know what they're doing so stay away from this core stuff or we want some code completion we want this and that um, integration and publishing latecomers you must have tons of questions <laughs> we got. Ten minutes of questions before everyone gets, well, lunch starts later, but. Latecomers, what brought you to Microsoft and Joomla? I'm sorry? I'm putting you on the spot. What, what brought you to uh, Microsoft and Joomla uh, presentation? Is that what this, is that what <laughs> That's what this was? <laughs> Your last one must have got out early. <laughs> Any other questions about how the. Joomla is the answer? Uh, how do you guys uh, maybe see uh, Microsoft and Joomla fitting together in your environments? I don't know exactly what you guys got going. <laughs> it's hard to put people on the spot. Oh well, well we know how to technologically make it happen. Um, <laughs> but do you, you know? Do you already have a Windows environment where I, that that might take advantage of this, or or just love Joomla and just want to put it everywhere? Yeah, everywhere. Everywhere. <laughs> Um, any other questions? 
things we can help with. Grace is going to be available all day today to help out. You can always stop by our booth as well and ask more questions. Grace will be at the party. She may not be anywhere else during the afternoon, but she'll be at the party. <laughs> She's a big fan of whiskey or scotch? Smelly scotch. Um, so thank you very much, guys. Enjoy the rest of the uh, June day. <laughs>